Hey, welcome to part three of my video looking at Ian Juby's Chopping Down the Tree of Life. This is going to be the last part, um, and I'm actually only going to cover one small thing. I think I've shown that I can only do, I can only cover one of his claims per video in reality. Um, and to be honest, the rest of the stuff in his video, it, it's it's not of interest to me to to, to get into, so I'm not going to. Um, I do want to go and revisit one of the claims he made. Uh, I showed the clip at the end of part two, um, where he talks about Hox genes. Uh, you might remember this part. We've seen where similar or identical Hox genes were used in multiple organisms. In fact, some of those common Hox genes are found in organisms whose alleged common ancestor did not have the same Hox gene. Now, Ian, that would make that would be a really good point. Um, to be honest, I would have to admit that that would be pretty damning evidence um, against evolution. To be perfectly honest, except for one problem, um, that's not true. Uh, it's not true remotely. It's not. It it has no basis in fact at all. Okay, and I'm trying to be nice here. Um, you a couple of times you have brought up a few, I guess you think there are examples of this, um, but you're claiming that the common ancestor didn't have it. And what the rest of the scientific community believes the common ancestor did or did not have are often very different things. Um, the one example that I could find specifically of, well, of this, using this as an example of impossible convergence uh, was this from your Crevo rant on convergent evolution. However, we find countless examples of similar traits between organisms that do not have an alleged common ancestor with the same trait. For example, the developing circuitry in the noses of fruit flies and humans. Fruit flies and humans are far, far apart from each other on the evolutionary tree. Their common ancestor did not have the same circuitry. So while this evidence still makes sense if they had a common designer, the puzzle pieces don't fit together for evolution. Now once again, this is an example, Ian, of where you don't give me a lot of hope that you've read the articles that you cite. Um, or if you had read them, that you didn't really understand what the articles were about. Um, you're referring to the Prieto Galdini paper uh, from PLOS Biology. I'll put a link down below. You guys can read the article yourself. It's a great, it's, a, it's actually very interesting. Um, I'm, I'm going to have to get into some detail here. This is going to be probably a little tedious. I apologize in advance, um, but but hopefully it will make some sense. Now, the evolution of olfactory systems is of particular interest um, in evolutionary biology because of the fact that, contrary to what you claim in your little Crevo rant, um, the sense of smell, chemoreception, um, is ancient. Um, and I don't know why you would think that the ancestor, the common ancestor of fruit flies and vertebrates wouldn't have had a sense of smell, uh, considering we find even bacteria are able to uh, detect chemicals in the environment. Um, some sort of chemoreception is found everywhere um, in all of the major divisions of life. But uh, specifically, the, the, the way it develops in um, <clears throat> tetrapods or in, in vertebrates, and this has been studied in mice and zebrafish again. We talked about those last time. Um, this is this is what is I think is kind of it, kind of interesting is that the what they call the OSN the olfactory sensory neurons, um, basically the nose if you want to call it that. The cells that do that develop first in an embryo, and then they trigger the development of in in vertebrates the olfactory lobe the glomeruli. Um, which then start branching and creating the what in vertebrates is the olfactory bulb, right? And this kind of makes sense. Uh, this is this is it's it's there's a lot of um, 
interest in how this architecture develops um, because we find that it's highly conserved, right? Um, basically, so these sensory neurons develop, they trigger the brain to start growing the olfactory bulb or developing um, the cells of the olfactory bulb. And what was, this is, this is where it gets kind of, I mean, and it, it kind of would make sense that it has to work that way. Um, I'm not entirely clear about the reasons why, um, but I trust those who study such things to know when they say that it kind of has to be this way. Um, I think a probably a suitable analogy, not a very good one, um, would be, uh, um, you guys are familiar with the, the Fox show Glee, correct? Um, now, we all know that show exists uh, for some reason. And um, at the same time, uh, there is a, a Hustler, Hustler Video has a, a show or a movie called This Ain't Glee Triple X, right? Now, it would seem, let's just say one day you're shopping in your local video store and you find a copy of Glee Triple X. And you turn it over and you look at the date and you find out that this, the, the porn parody of Glee predates the show. In other words, the, the porno parody came first, right? It doesn't make a lot of sense um, because of the fact that the porn video, as you guys, if you've ever seen any of the porn parodies, they rarely do much um, backstory. In other words, the, the, the jokes and the humor of them um, relies on the fact that you're familiar with the existing show, right? I, that's a ter I know it's a terrible analogy. Um, and by the way, that porn parody exists. Watch to the end for proof. Um, anyway, anyhow, so it makes sense that the, the sensory neurons for olfaction develop first, and then they trigger the brain part of the brain that can interpret those signals. Um, but then something surprising was found. This and this is this is would this would have been something that you could have brought up as a possible disproof of evolution or something. I mean, not that it would have been very accurate, but it would have been better than the one you presented. Is the fact that in 2009, Shang et al. Uh, published a paper where they looked at developing fruit flies in the uh, metamorphosing in the in the pupa. And they found that the glomeruli, um, what's called the antennal lobe in, in insects, develops first. And then the olfactory neurons develop. See, it goes backwards. And that makes absolutely no sense. Um, it's, it's it, again, it would be equivalent to finding this porn version of Glee predating the show. Um, Anyway, so this this was it's kind of a, a mystery. This was something it, it doesn't make sense that because we know, we assume if you want to call it that, that olfaction is an ancient sense. It's it is evolved a long, long time ago in deep time, um, and therefore every single living animal carries with it this architecture for development that follows the same path meaning the sensory neurons develop first, and then the part of the brain that can interpret those neurons, it triggers the development of that. Um, it wouldn't make sense that insects have the opposite arrangement. Um, it, 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 it's, it would be it, it, not a disproof of evolution, but it's certainly something that you, know, you could bring up. Um, but the problem is, is that, once again, the Prieto... Um, the, the, the Godini et al. paper um, showed that the Xiang et al. paper from 2009 was incorrect because the Godini, uh, Prieto Godini paper looked at the actual development of the maggot, the, the larva, and found that, yes, indeed, it does develop the way we expect it to. It does develop the sensory neurons first, and then those sensory neurons trigger the development of the glomeruli 
Okay, I hope that does that make some sense? I'm. Um, in other words, the mystery has been solved. It's no longer a mystery. The the it olfaction didn't have an independent origin, which would have been the only viable conclusion um, based on the Shang et al. paper from 2009, would suggest that maybe olfaction in insects has a completely different evolutionary origin, which is contrary to what we would think to be true. And it turns out that what problem is solved, we know that insects, what happens is, is that once the larva develops its sensory system and then it goes through metamorphosis, it kind of, everything is rearranged again, and then it follows a different pattern, but it already has a template based on how it developed in its larval phase. So the glomeruli already kind of know to grow prior to the um, development of the uh, sensory neurons. So anyway, that's it. I know that kind of sounds sounds boring and weird, but read read the paper. Um, again, it's it's free access and it's highly recommended. Uh, anyway, so I'm just again, I wish you guys would creationists would actually look not just mine titles of these papers looking for something that you can use as evidence, um, but actually read the papers and try to understand them because you no you claim to do so, but I don't have a high confidence level that that's what you're doing. It seems to be a repeated pattern with you, Ian, where you say, and this study, you know, provides a major stumbling block to evolution, when in fact the paper says oftentimes very different results than what you claim. Um, anyway, so uh, I'm going to end this. This is going to be a short one, I guess. I don't have much else to say about it, and I'm not going to finish the rest of your video. Um, I mean, I'm not going to, it's not because it's not, I'm sure it's, it's interesting material and such, but it's not of interest to me. It's, a, uh, he talks about, uh, a DNA as stupid design and a few other things. And it, it's, you know, not my area. Uh, information type stuff is not my information theory and all of that. Uh, it's not my area of expertise and it's not really something I'm interested in. Uh, so I'm going to... I guess I'll, from now on, though, what I'm going to do, I have a point, I do have a point here. I'm going to um, start, if I make any more video responses to Ian Juby, I'm going to, or to Genesis Week specifically, I'm going to just take one claim and make a video about it rather than um, make, you know, try to cover the whole 30-minute video because I've proven I can't do that, so... Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call this quits then. All right, you guys take care and I will hopefully be making a video at some point in the future again. Um, and enjoy this clip. It's hard to be your teacher cause I see you watching me. I'm easy. I'm horny. Fulfill my fantasy. So pretty, so horny, sh nobody will find out. Still growing, it's showing. Okay, but don't be loud. Don't come.